prayer for us right now in this church. Magandang magandang gabi sa inyo lahat. Amen. And I'm so glad that despite the situation that we have today, still you are very eager to be with here and join us in our uh, our prayer meeting service today. And of course, I would like to greet also our brethren from different places, our Tabernacle of Faith uh, Baptist Church brethren from their uh, respective houses. Thank you so much. And please stay tuned. Uh, stay uh, uh, watching with us and join with us in our prayer meeting. If you have your prayer request, just send with us in our group chat and we will pray later after this uh, message, after this service. Of course, I'd like also to greet our brethren from MIDC, Maranata International Baptist Church, Pastor Ramiro Adona. Thank you so much, Pastor uh, Adona, my, uh, my senior pastor, who are now allowing us to be uh, be with them for our prayer meeting. It's a joint fellowship, a joint service of MIBC and TFBC. Thank you so much. We need to pray for our pastor and his family. And of course, our brethren, all our brethren from MIBC, Maranata International Baptist Church. And of course, our dear bre uh, brethren from uh, Batangas, Taala, uh, from uh, San Luis, Batangas, our brethren, dear brethren, our dear pastor friend, Pastor Sani Guerrero of Gethsemane Baptist Church. And please continue to pray for him, for the church that they are celebrating. They're going to celebrate their 10th uh, year anniversary Amen. this coming August 30. So please continue to pray for, for that celebration, that the Lord may move and work in that place, especially in soul winning, reaching the soul lost souls. And of course, their, their heart desire, you yung kanilang uh, acquire the property, and they will be able to start yung kanilang instruction and kanilang church. Of course, the main thing, which is serving the Lord in soul winning. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you to pray to, to get so many pastors and Pastor Sonny Guerrero and his family. Of course, the old brethren from uh, get so many Baptist Church. Of course, our dear sister, uh, sister church, 8,000 miles away, Maranatha Baptist Church, Magalan, Texas, USA. And I thank God, I thank God for the safety travel, for the guidance, and for the comfort of God that God has given to Pastor Darren Miller. No, from California going to McAllen, Texas, it's almost 24 hours. Could you imagine that? How far the place of California from McAllen, Texas, USA. But still, God gave him a sufficient strength for him to be able to come back on his very, uh, very sweet, sweet home to his family with Mama Anita and the rest of the family of Miller. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. No, Pastor Garmila, even though despite of being tired for the whole, almost whole day of trouble, but still God sustained him. And of course, thank you so much for our brethren from MBC, all our brethren from Maranatha Baptist Church, McAllen, Texas, USA. Thank you so much. And I hope and pray that you will be blessed in our service tonight. Of course, our dear sister from uh, Mexico, Sister Leticia, and uh, from Seattle Baptist Church, Sister Emily Brown, and the rest of our dear brethren from uh, uh, 8,000 miles away who are now joining with us tonight. Of course, our dear brother from different places, John Paul sa Colorado Spring, USA, Sister Tess and Sister Kathy, who is now uh, watching tonight. I think, makatulog pa. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure they are watching tonight. And of course, our dear brother from Nicosia, Nicosia, uh, Baptist Church, Bible Baptist Church, we would like to greet you. And of course, our dear brother from different places, from Kingdom, Saudi Arabia, no, Sister Maricar, Tijano, and uh, Piantani uh, Levanto, and the rest of the family there. Sister Lilith, Lilith and Nani Elsie, Elsie Agnes, no? right now she's watching. And of course, our dear brethren from Australia, Canada, Middle East, Japan, Hong Kong, and of course, uh, sa Taiwan, and the rest of our brethren who are living at uh, nagtatrabaho po sa ibang bulsa. And of course, do not forget to greet, I don't want to, uh, to, to forget to greet all our brethren from different places in the Philippines. Thank you so much, Sister Arian from Makarashaw, Pakistan, and of course, the rest of our friends from Tarlac, from uh, Pampanga, from Quezon City, from Garantrias, from uh, uh, Kawit, uh, and the rest of uh, your brethren here in Cavite. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And of course, I pray also that God may uh, uh, bless you through uh, this uh, prayer meeting this week, or this is word of, of, of God that we are now about to share with you tonight after the, the congregation singing. Thank you so much, and uh, do not uh, forget to send your prayer request. No, he sent you po ang yung prayer request, and we will pray for that. Please continue for one another. 
and uh, help us one another. Let us see us one with the grace of God and with the, with the uh, uh, favor of the Lord. Of course, let's continue to pray for our dear brethren, Sister uh, Arlene and Ryan Dugime, because uh, uh, their son are now in the hospital, but uh, I think that because the doctors uh, allow them to uh, uh, discharge today, but uh, I think they need a financial support. No, please continue to pray for, for the monetary support that they may be able to, uh, to uh, discharge now, no? immediately. So, please continue to pray for them. And of course, not sila Panginoon doon sa hospital. Grabe, ang hirap talaga ba hospitalized ngayon. Of course, please continue to pray to Sister El uh, Elena uh, because her, uh, her father uh, already uh, uh, promoted, already uh, uh, died, but uh, they still need a, a, a financial support for them to be able to pay their errands, no? their uh, responsibility for the funeral part, right? Of course, the most of the community. Because of course, the comfort of family could need to pray for them. Of course, Sister Ayan and her family and her brother is going to need to pray for the healing, for the speedy recovery and healing, and of course, the financial support that they also need. And of course, we just continue to pray one another. Lahat po ng mga prayer requests po ninyo. Just send me last day, and we will pray with our own. So, once again, magandang magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. And God bless us all. And may the Lord be with you always as we continue to serve Him. Let us continue to serve the Lord. May you call on our leader for tonight. We're singing. Handa na po ba kayo? So, tawarin mo natin ang ating leader para pamunahan po tayo sa ating awitan. But before that, let us all stand and let us pray before we start our congregation was singing. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you. This is the day that you have made for us. I know, Lord God, that you are with us and the Holy Spirit be moving our mix tonight. Thank you so much for all the blessings, all the opportunity, and all the guidance that you have given to us throughout the days and throughout the, the weeks and the months, Lord God, that uh, we are uh, passing by, Lord God. Still, Lord God, we are able, we are able to surpass this moment. And Lord, we thank you. We so much thank you. We so much thankful, Lord God, because still we are we are healthy and we are not even experiencing some sicknesses, Lord God. But still, Father God, we believe that your comfort and guidance is always with us. That's why, Father God, salamat po kami noon. And Lord, if there any sin na makikita mo sa 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 amin, we are humbly bow before you and ask forgiveness. Forgive us, Father God, and forgive all the things that we have done. And hindi nakalulugod po sa inyong Panginoon. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you tonight. We bring back to you all the glory and honor and praise, Father God. Na tapat tamang sa inyong lamang, Panginoon. As we continue serving you, Lord God, today, let me you find us, Lord God, uh, we have a clean heart and have a totally uh, surrendered life to you, Father God. That's our pastor, Pastor Adona, that you may continue to use him, Father God, in the ministry at in Maranatha International Baptist Church. Bless Pastor uh, Darren Miller. Thank you so much for guiding him, for keeping him safe and sound through the trouble, and continue to pray for uh, Mother Mother Hazel, for the speedy recovery, for the continuous healing, Lord God, and even to uh, Grandpa Clayton and the rest of the family of Miller, Lord God, continue to pray for them. And also all the brethren in, in Maranatha Baptist Church, like Adam Texas. And of course, I pray, Father God, for the family Baptist Church, for they are now uh, uh, looking forward for celebration of their 10th year anniversary of their faithfulness and your love upon their Father God. And please, Lord God, I pray for the desire of their heart. Please continue to guide Pastor Sonny Guerrero and his family and all the brethren from the Seventy Baptist Church. To be to bless us, Father, as well, our brethren who's watching right now. All our brethren, our brothers and sisters in the Lord, and all the brethren outside in this world, in this country, Lord God, we are praying for you, Lord God, for them. Thank you, Father God, and please undertake us tonight. Please undertake us tonight. Let your Holy Spirit be upon us and move in our midst today. Thank you so much. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Let's continue to stand and we call on our leader, the church. Oh, sure.
persons uh, in our live streaming that really uh, po faithfully were joining with us, especially our dear brethren from Kalashaw, Pakistan, Sister Arian. She's with us tonight. Thank you so much, Sister Arian Quinto. And God bless you, my dear sister. Of course, our dear sister from Mexico, Sister Leticia. And uh, I think it's uh, early in the morning in her place, but she's with us tonight. Thank you so much, Sister Amen. Leticia from Mexico. And of course, Pastor Darren Miller is already 5 o'clock in the morning. Despite of being tired of his problem, he can help from uh, uh, California to uh, to Nagana, Texas. But, but uh, he is faithfully uh, joining us tonight. And of course, he invited some brethren from M. Maranata, from MBC, Maranata Baptist Church, Macanin, Texas. And uh, some brethren are there who's watching right now. You know, Sister Marta Reyes and uh, Sister Jaime, Brother Jaime I mean, right, she's the right place. And of course, some brethren from Maranatha Baptist Church. And of course, our dear pastor, Pastor Gabiro Adona. He's present right now. And thank you so much, Pastor Adona and his family. Si Ryanie, please do uh, subscribe sa kanilang pong, uh, YouTube, no? kanilang father and son singing tandem. No, you will be blessed. And you will be blessed in your ministry na kanilang ginawa. Please do subscribe. No? Of course, isa pang kanilang uh, gawain po yung... Uh, yung uh, salita ng kaligtasan okay? kina Pastor uh, ang, ang Kibap Ministry so we will share with you no? panoorin nyo pa yun, manatinig po kayo doon and you, you will learn so much no? from the Word of God, why we are Christians why God saved us and what Jesus died for us and uh, saved us and uh, talagang do, ang yung sounds doctrine, yung doctrina maintindihan po natin makinig po kayo doon and please uh, subscribe on that uh, YouTube no, uh, account with the feedback. And of course, thank you so much sa ating mga MIBC brethren na nanonood po ngayon. Am I not able to name you one by one? Kasi ang dami po ninyo. Mamaya, may makalimutan po ako. Magtampo po kayo. But I would like to greet you in general. No? I'd like to greet all of you, my beloved brethren from Maranata International Baptist Church of Marugundon. 
Salamat po sa inyong lahat who are you are faithfully watching us. At least send your prayer request. Later on, we will include you and we will include that in our prayer time. No, mamaya samahan niyo po kami yan. And thank you so much for being with us tonight. And please do watch continually. And uh, of course, this coming Sunday, we are so much thrilled and excited. No, we are so much excited because we have a very, very, very special a special speaker on the Sunday afternoon. So please be here on the Sunday afternoon because we have a surprise a surprise speaker. No? So, kaya mga kayo sa Sunday, lahat po nandito sa umaga, wala na pong uwian. Hindi na po tayo uwi, no? Mag-lunch fellowship tayo dito, tapos hihintayin natin yung speaker. Tapos yung speaker po natin, ay malapit po sa puso po natin at magdadala sila ng materials for San Yuxal Fellowship. Wow. Yeah. Wow, San Yuxal. So, bibili tayo ng mga ng mga lettuce, ng mga beef, at saka lettuce. <laughs> so, please be, please be excited. And, uh, and we're so excited about that. Of course, Mr. Dara Miller, you're supposed to be here to join us in our fellowship on Sunday evening. So, please, the, uh, anyway, we will do a live streaming for you, Mr. Dara Miller. Uh, for you to be able to join with us on that uh, special event, a special night for our service since this coming Saturday. Of course, be excited and thrilled about that because we have very, very, very special to my heart ang ating po guest speaker on that Sunday afternoon. So be blessed. So may po, please stay tuned and uh, relax. Sit back and relax. Pass your seat down because we have a special number. We have a special number, a very professional singer. Amen. But he surrendered this life to the Lord. He's a very famous singer, but God used him. That's why he surrendered his life. And even his being, being popular or being famous, ay sinuko niya sa Panginoon. And now, he will, he, will, he will sing for the Lord. Tawagin mo natin. Shider. Brother Michael, sing for the Lord. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Disregarding every cost from 
the manger to the cross, you still came just for me. You still came. tonight and of course teacher net teacher net adona is with us tonight thank you so much teacher net and uh please continue to pray for one another amen so once again welcome to our prayer meeting it is a joint service of maranatha international baptist church and the maranatha of faith baptist church mission here in nai cavite once again we are in the series of studies of book of psalms amen Ano nyo, ang Book of Psalms, no? ito po ay uh, napakaraming chapter po na ito. And uh, talaga naman kapag kinikaralan natin ito, talagang siguro wala na tayong hahanapin na pag-aalinangan dahil nandito na po ang dami po mga pangako. There so much things na pinangako ng Panginoon, encouragement, no? uh, exhortation, and so on and so forth. No? And tonight, tayo po ngayon mag-aaral ang salita ng Panginoon. Please open your Bible in Psalm chapter 92 verses 12 to 15. Psalm 92 verses 12 to 15. And uh, please continue to pray for our dear pastor, Pastor Sani Guerrero, kanilang 10th year anniversary this coming August 13. And Pastor, we will pray for you. We will pray for your anniversary. Amen. So, uh, uh, we are here and I'm willing to pray for you. And we love you, Pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor. And for your family. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your loving wife. Not talaga na very supportive and your uh, children. Psalm 92, verses 12 to 15. Are you there? Amen. Let us all stand up. Let us read together with a lonely voice. Let us begin on verse 12. Begin. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. The shoe that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in Him. Amen. No, this book of the Psalm of chapter 92, it's really a, a good encouragement for us because it is the book which uh, people of Israel are giving thanks to the Lord because of His goodness and kindness upon the Lord. And of course, it is po a great reminder. Great reminder of uh, righteous people na lumanagok sa kanilang pananabalitaya. 
And tonight, our very happy message, our title of message tonight is Flourishing Faith. Lumalagong pananampalatay. Is your faith ay lumalago? Is your faith growing? Ang pananampalataya po ba natin ay lumalago ng paangat? Or nagkakaroon ng progress? Or our faith still like a water na kung saan stagnant, hindi gumagalaw, o minsan pa nga ay nawawala. And tonight, let us check ourselves, our Christian life, if our faith are flourishing right now, or we are fainting with our faith. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you. And tonight, we offer to you our service. Let your Holy Spirit be upon us and move in our midst tonight. Despite of our situation that we have, sicknesses, disappointment, discouragement, poverty, uh, yung, yung situation na ito in our, in our lives today, let your Holy Spirit and let our faith sa inyo, Panginoon, ay may exercise po namin. At lumago kami, Panginoon, not only by our mouth, saying that we are growing Christians, but rather, may ipakita po namin ito into action. And tonight, Father God, thank you so much for your word. In Psalm 92, it is about the righteous people who shall flourish their faith. King David was giving them the, 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 uh, the thanksgiving to you, Father God, because yung, yung faithfulness sa kanya ay talaga mong hindi mo siya iniiwan at hindi mo siya pinagabayaan, Panginoon. And tonight, let this message tonight in our lives become a reminder that we need to grow, not to become stagnant, not to become status quo in our status, but rather to flourish our faith in you, Father. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Flourishing faith. No, magkita po natin sa pinasa po natin dito. Ang sabi po rito, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that plant, the, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And verse 14 says, They shall still bring forth fruit. Yung lumalago po ay namumunga. Kapag ang buhay kristyano po po ay lumalago, kagaya po ng isang puno, masagana at malusog ang isang puno kung siya ay nagbibigay ng bunga. Masagana at kapag ipakinabang po ang isang halaman o isang puno kung siya ay nagpuprovide ng bunga ng kanyang buhay. It's the same thing with our lives as a Christians. We can able to say that we are flourishing in our faith or we have a, a growing Christian life if our lives ay meron pong bunga. That we are able to bring fruit in our Christian life. How many years have been Christians? How many years have you been here in your church serving the Lord, serving in, in, the, in, the, in the ministry, but still, you're not able to assess or you're not able to see, in my growing Christians, in my faith is flourishing, ang aking mga pananampalataya ay lumalago. Church, I'll give you some points, some, some, some things for us to be able to remember. Yung mga nauna pong mananampalataya at ako ano ba ang nagagawa po ng isang pananampalataya sa buhay po natin. We will see here the fascinating facts about faith. Yung kamanghabanghang katotohanan patungkol po sa pananampalataya. Number one, may kita natin dito, salvation. Salvation is by faith alone. Sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya, this is one of the example of fascinating fact about faith. Just only by faith, you will be saved. Sa pamamagitan po ng pananampalataya, Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the words of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Sa so, pamamagitan po ng pananampalataya, hindi po sa anumang utos, hindi mo sa anumang gawa, kundi sa pananampalataya sa Panginoong Isa Kristo. This will be one of the fascinating facts about faith. Could you imagine that? In Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Ang nabubuhay po, ang isang matuwid po ay nabubuhay po 
sa pananampalataya. Not only salvation is by faith alone, but of course, one of the fascinating facts about faith is kahit na mahin, maliit ang iyong pananampalataya, kahit na ang, ang pananampalataya mo ay maliit lang, but it can do great things. Basta ang importante dito, you are, you and I, exercising faith. That you and I, sabi nito, kahit maliit lang ang iyong pananampalataya, kahit mayroon kang kapalagot na pananampalataya, kung ito'y pangahawakan mo, it can do great things. Just like the example of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, ang sabi doon, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of master, can you imagine that Jesus Christ, our God, compared the kind of faith in the, in the, in the grain of mustard seed. Kahit daw kasi liit ng mustasa, kahit kabuti pa yan, kahit carrots pa yan, nagamit ng Panginoon is mustard seed. Ang sabi nito, you shall say unto his mountain, to this mountain, remove hands to yonder place. Pati, malaki po ang magagawa po if we are exercising our faith. How much more ko ang inyong pananampalataya ay malago at patuloy na lumalago sa harapan ng Panginoon. Small faith nga lang eh. Faith, faith can do a great things in the life of His people. These are the fascinating faith facts about faith. Not only that, it, makita po natin po rito ang isang mga kamanghamanggang bagay, katotohanan about faith. Yung foundational faith is a vital for stable church growth. Foundational faith. Napaka-importante po yan sa isang paglago po ng gawain ng Panginoon. Ang bawat sa po sa atin ay lumalago. Kung bawat sa po sa atin, hindi lang ang pastor, hindi lang ang manggagawa, kundi ka ang bawat membro po ng simbahan po ng Tabernacle of Faith Baptist Church, ng Maranatang International Baptist Church, and even Maranatang Baptist Church, the Seventy Baptist and so on and so forth, if their foundation are built in faith in the Lord, it is very vital for the stability for the church growth. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 to 12 says, But thou, O man God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and patience, and meekness. Verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on the eternal life. We're into the art of school and has prepared a good profession before many witnesses. Let us fight the good faith of faith. Apostle Paul encouraged us to fight good fight of faith. The kind of nangyari, we will see the good example of Apostle Paul kung paano niya napagugian ang laban sa pamamagitan ng kanyang pananampalataya. Church, flourishing faith keeps on growing ang lumalago pong pananampalataya o ang may maunlad na pananampalataya po ay patuloy pong lumalago sa kanyang buhay. And even it's very relevant in our lives today. If we believe that God is with us, God is in, is in control in our life, despite of this situation that we have in our life, disappointment, discouragement, God will allow us to become a growing Christian and become a mature Christian. Why? Because despite of the problems that we have in our lives, masasabi lang natin that God is good all the time. Then all these things shall be, I mean, all things work together for good. Lumalago po at patuloy na lumalago ang ating buhay, pananampalataya bilang isang Kristiyano. Kung makikita po na merong pag-unggan po sa atin. At hindi po na natiling stagnant lang, status ko lang, kundi kahit sa may kahirapan, kahit sa may kaguluhan, may gila natin lang Panginoon, tinutulungan tayo sa pagkataniniwala tayo, pinangawangan po natin, that God is with us, and God is in control, and God is the faith that we need to exercise. Let us keep faith flourishing in our lives. Let us keep the faith that we have flourish, umunlad, lumago sa ating buhay. At makita ng Panginoon. And tonight, I will give you three, three things, three principles for us to be able to understand and to be reminded how to become or how to have a flourishing faith in our Christian life. Develop, we, need to, we need to develop the principles of flourishing faith tonight. Number one, our first principle that we need to we understand sa ating pag-aaral ngayon, masasumpungan po natin 
Doon po sa verse 12 ng Psalm chapter 92. Ang sabi doon, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. May kita yung word, the righteous. Ang matuwid. Paano ba maging matuwid? Paano ba matuwid? Hindi matuwid. Kasi sabi rito, ang matuwid ay lumalago o lalago kagaya ng isang puno ng palma. Have you ever seen the tree na sobrang lago? Ang isang puno pong malago, ang definition po, ang example po sa Psalms chapter 1, nakikita mo po doon, na nakakonekta po sa tubig. Amen. Na meron pong source. Ang isang tao pong matuwid po, dapat po nakakonekta po sa source na tama. At ang tamang source po natin ay ang ating Panginoon. If you are living, connected unto the Lord, you live as a, like, like a righteous man na kung saan magkakaroon ng paglago ng iyong buhay kagaya po ng pantry. Kaya nga, paano po? Paano po magiging righteous para ikaw at ako ay lumago kagaya po ng pantry? Number one, we need to consistent in living. Consistent living keeps faith flourishing. Yung righteousness dapat nananatili po sa atin. Dapat yung ating consistency as a Christian, dapat nandun po yung ating pong paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Hindi dapat nagsusway. Hindi dapat naaakit ng sanlibutan. Hindi kasan nagkaroon ng problema ay susuko ka na. Hindi nagkaroon ka ng mga circumstances sa buhay mo. Nagkaroon ng kagutuman. Nagkaroon ng problema. Nagkaroon ng kakulangan. Nagkaroon ng heartache. Nagkaroon ng depression. Nagkaroon ng society. Ay susuko ka na. Dapat hindi ka susuko. We need to be consistent in our Christian life. And even in our living, because consistent living keeps faith flourishing. Let us consider some heroes or heroes of the faith. Example, si Joseph. Despite the situation that Joseph had, even in prison, ang kanyang pananampalatayo po ay nag-flourish. We will see here in Genesis chapter 39 verses 21 to 23. But the Lord was with Joseph. Church, you and I in this kind of situation that we have in our life, God is with us. Amen. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. The Bible says, He is Emmanuel. God is with us. At sino ang nasa atin? He is Jehovah, a powerful God. Just like what happened to Joseph. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. Ganun po ang Panginoon. Nakikita ng Diyos, He heard our prayers. He, he will hear our affliction. He see our affliction. He see our more, I mean, our cry. He heard our prayers. Kaya sabi niya dito, He showed in mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed Joseph had all the prisoners that we are in the prison and whatsoever they did there, He was the doer of it. Verse 23 says, the keeper of the prison looked not unto anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. And the rest is history. We know about the history of Joseph, right? That in spite of the situation that he had during the time, but because God promised to him that God is with him, God will never leave him. Church, ang pangako ng Panginoon, hindi lang naman kay Joseph eh. Even nowadays, the promise of God for you and I is the same. The Lord is with us. In times of pandemic, God is with us. In times of agony, what is our comfort? And where our comfort came from? Of course, from the Lord. You know, Jeremiah chapter 8, Sister Shea, 17 verse 7 to 8. No? Ang Panginoon, hindi tayo papapayaan. 17 verses 7 to 8. 8, 8, 8 and 9. Usually learn your sister Joy Orias. Yung kanilang mission. Verse. Amen? Nakita mo natin dito, ang Diyos kailanman na hindi magkukulang at nagkukunang. Not only Joseph, let's take a look at the life of Stephen in the New Testament. Stephen faith flourished when martyrdom approached. Yung sa panahon na kung saan dumating na siya na pag-ihira because he was what? What happened to, to Stephen? 
Pinagbabato siya dahil sa kanyang pananampalataya. And he's stoned to death. Hindi siya sumuko. Hindi siya nagbigay ng pag-alinlangan ang kanyang pananampalataya. Kahit sa panoon ng kamatayan, nandun pa rin ang kanyang paninalig at paniniwala sa Panginoon Church. Baka kung ngayon sa kalalagayan ni Stephen, ay hindi ito ang inyong maging paninindigan sa Panginoon. Siguro kagutuman nga lang, baka magkaroon na tayo ng problema sa ating pananampalataya. Siguro yung karamdaman ngayon na pwede natin ma-encounter, baka sumuko na tayo. But I thank God, kasi merong patunay na ang Diyos kailanman ay hindi nagpapabaya at magpapabaya. Acts chapter 7 verses 54 to 66 says, It is a story about Stephen. His faith shall not be shaken. Church, let this example of life of Stephen become a reminder for us that despite of death in front of our face, you and I shall not be shaken of this. Because we do believe mawala man tayo sa mundong ito, our life will stay forever with the Lord. Just like what happened to Stephen. He became consistent. He lives consistently in the eyes of God. Not only Stephen, but in the life of Paul. Paul, faith flourished under severe persecution. Oh! Can you see that? Yung kanyang persecution na nangyari po. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 70 to 18 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Did you imagine that? This is the motivation of Apostle Paul. That's why he able to, to overcome this kind of persecution. Not only a simple persecution, but a severe persecution. Baka sumakit nga lang ang iyong kuko eh. Baka nga nasabihan ka ng kaibigan mo na lumagpas ka sa langit eh. Baka masabihan ka ng mga magulang mo na tumigil ka na eh. Baka sabihin lang ng kumpanya nyo kapag hindi ka sumuko at hindi ka tumalikod dyan at tanggalin sa trabaho. Baka isa palaran mo ang pananapalataya na meron ka. Baka nga sa pagbibigay ng ayute eh. Sabihin ano ka? Baptist? Oo oh, ka. Baka sabihin hindi po akong baptist. Para lang makakuha ng ayute. Paul consistent ang kanyang pananampalataya sa Panginoon. Why? Kasi ito yung statement ni Paul sa Church of Corinthos. Sabi niya, for our life affliction which is but for a moment. Pansamantala naman. Hello? Work it for us for a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18 says, why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are not are seen, are temporal. Yung kahirapan na nakikita po natin is just only temporary. The persecution that we are now experiencing in our Christian life, in our faith, is just temporary. The, 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 the affliction, the sicknesses, or the, the starvation, even the poverty, ito yung mga nakikita, nararamdaman, just for a moment. Pero sabi ni Apostle Paul, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Church, this will this, this was the motivation of Apostle Paul while he able to overcome the severe persecution of his life. Not only that, we know as a Christians what happened in Hebrews chapter 11 as an example for us approaching faith during tough times. We will see here the life of, of Abel the life of Enoch, the life of Noah, the life of Abraham, the life of Moses, the life of Jacob. Those are the, 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 the Christians or the forefather Christians. What? Become a consistent of their faith. And what happened to their faith? Lumagupo from generation after generation to generation. Church, your persecution yung kahirapan, yung karamdaman that we are now experiencing today, wala pa yan sa kaniting na hirap na dinanas po ng mga naunang pananampalataya na naunang kristyano sa ating buhay. Let this example of faith, the faith of Abel, the faith of Enoch, the faith 
of Noah, the faith of Abraham, the faith of Moses, and the faith of Jacob be a great example for us, a pattern for us to live consistently in the eyes of the Lord. No church, faith flourishes in proportion to our dedication to Christ. Did you agree with me? If we are proportionally or if we are dedicated to Christ our lives and always seeking to God, nothing more, nothing less, only the Lord Jesus and focus unto Him and live consistently, proportionally, dedicatedly to our God. Ang ating pananampalataya po ay magiging malago sa harapan ng Panginoon. And we will able to say that whatever happens, anuman ang mangyari sa ating buhay, magkaroon ka man ng karamdaman, magkaroon ka man ng severe persecution, magkaroon ka man ng malaking kakulangan, kagutuman, miserable life, we will able to say, or we are able to say, God is in control because He is in control. That He will never leave me nor forsake me. Look at yourself. Are you glad that you're still alive? Are you glad that you're still in the right track of your life? And still God is in control of life? Can you see that? That God is consistent blessing us. God is consistent in His blessing for each and every one. Why not you and I become consistent in our Christian life for us to be able to flourish our faith? That's why we need to be consistent. And consistent living keeps faith flourishing. Dapat manatili tayo on track, consistent para lumagod yung ating manatili. Principle number two. May kita mo natin dito, not only consistent living keeps flourishing faith, may kita natin no? in verse 13, na kita, those that be planted, listen to this, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. Amen. You are here. You are here in this church. That despite the situation, but despite of being under MECQ, limited in attending the church, GCQ, another limitation, but still you are here because you are exercising your faith. You're still there watching us and keep on learning about the Word of God, about His message. It means you and I will be implanted in the house of the Lord. At kung ikaw ay meron kang paglanais na ikaw ay nagkaroon ng involvement sa gawain ng Panginoon, it means you are aiming to grow in your faith. That's why principle number two that we that, that na matututunan po natin, not only consistent living keeps faith flourishing, but of course, church involvement keeps faith flourishing. Totoo po ito, mga kapatid. Subukan mo lumayo po sa gawain ng Panginoon. Subukan mo hindi umatin ng church. Subukan mo hindi makinig na salita ng Panginoon. Your faith or your Christian life become what? Dry. Just like an example of a burning ang tawag sa baga? Burning flame. Burning flame? Subukan mo ang isang baga ikaw, tanggalin mo din isang baga sa mga kumpunang mga baga, what will happen? mawawala po yung init. Mawawala po yung kanyang paglago. Yung pagnanais. It's the same thing with us. That's why let us encourage one another what? To become what? A people of God. Maging tao tayo ng Diyos and we need to become what? Involved in His ministry. Involved in His church. And be a part of the God's ministry na kanyang ibinigay sa atin. And what is our ministry? Become what? Become a channel of blessing. A channel of salvation 
to do a main thing. And what is the main thing? Sharing the gospel to other people. You know, merita natin dito, we need to what? Involve. Kailangan ikaw at ako para tayo ay lumago, magmunga, at maging maayos ang ating pananampalataya at lumago ang ating pananampalataya. We need to be involved in church. Ikaw at ako. Kaya nga sabi niya doon sa sinabi niya, those that be planted in the house of the Lord, ang sino man ang siyang nananahan sa tahanan ng Panginoon ay lumalago, ay umuunlan. Kaya siguro kapatid, kahit ilang taong ka ng kristyano, hindi ka lumalago dahil hindi mo ini-involve o sarili mo sa gawain ng Panginoon. Gusto mo lang ay Zimbabwe. Are you came from? Where you came from? I came from Zimbabwe. Ano Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe. 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 Huwag naman ganoon. Hindi yun ang design ng Panginoon. That's not the very design of God in our Christian life. The design of God in our Christian life to become involved in His church. At ang pagiging involved po, ito po yung nagiging dahilan kung bakit ikaw at ako ay lalago sa kanyang gawain at sa ating pananampalataya. You know, ano ibig sabihin dito ng house of the Lord? The house of the Lord speaks of the people of God. Ikaw kasi yun eh. Tayo yun. That's why sabi ng Panginoon, ang sino mang nananahan, ang sino mang nananahan sa kanya, sa kanyang tahanan, Because we are the temple of God. We are the church. People are the church. Not this building. Amen. But you and I. Diba tayo po yun? Patutunan ko yun sa Baptist Distinctive. Ang church po, hindi po building. But the church is you and I. It speaks of the people of God. Ano nyo kapatid? Kung tayo po ay nananahan po sa salita ng Panginoon at nag-i-involve po sa kanyang gawain, ang ating pong pananampalataya po ay lumalago at lalago po sa harapan ng Panginoon. Kaya nga sabi niya, if my people were called by my name, kung ang mga taong ito ay tatawag sa aking pangalan, when was the last time you called or you asked the Lord for help? When was the last time even in in, in In, in bountiful life or in blessed life, tumawag pa kayo sa Panginoon, baka nakakalimutan natin ang Panginoon. Kaya nga napaka-importante po sa panahon ng, ng kagutuma, sa panahon ng kalungkutan, and even sa panahon ng kasaganahan, let us stay and involve ourselves to the people of God, which the church. Let us involve ourselves to one another. Let us have a fellowship Let us gather one another. You know, napaka-importante po na ikaw at ako ay nagkakaroon po ng fellowship. At hindi natin napapabayaan ang gawain. Katulad ng ginagawa ng iba. Sabi po doon saan? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. At hindi na ba huwasan and so much no more. Sabi po doon. That's why gathering God's people speaks of fellowship and faith. Kapag ikaw ay nakikipagkaisa po sa people of God, with us the household of faith, nandoon ka, nakikiisa ka, it means, ikaw ay merong pakikiisa at ikaw ay merong parehas na pananampalataya sa bawat isa. That you believe that those people, sa so loob ng gawain na ini-involve mo ang sarili mo, it means, sabi mo, makakatulong sa akin to sa ating buhay pananampalataya. Church, this house of the Lord na sinasabi po rito, it speaks of the people of God. And the house of the Lord also speaks of prayer. The house of the Lord speaks of prayer. Sabi rito sa, sa, sa 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Yung tao ko ng Diyos ay nananalangin at nagpapakumbaba sa harapan ng Panginoon. Siya po ay nagkakaroon ng humility. This means people praying for one another builds faith. Ang bawat isa 
ikaw at ako, kung pagkasamayin natin ang ating panalangin na sinasabi po rin household of faith o the tongue of people of God, you and I, kapag ikaw pumunta at ibon ang sarili mo na ikaw ay nakikisa sa panalangin, ibig sabihin ng you and I or one another builds faith. Naniniwala tayo na ang Diyos ang siyang sasagot at magiging po sa atin. Kapatid, napaka-importante po. Napaka-importante po. Lalo na kayo na nandito po ngayon. I thank God for your life. That despite of danger, that despite of situation that we have right now, you are here in the church. Though we are observing social distancing, but I thank God ang lakas ng loob nyo natin na magkita ko ito ng personal at manalangin na sama-sama. Opo, maganda rin po yun. Nakikinig at nanonood po kayo ngayon. Napakaganda rin po yan at malaking tulong po sa atin yan. Pero mas magandang kagalakan kung ikaw, na membro ng church, kung meron ka kayanan at meron ka paraanan na umatin ka at maging visible ka sa loob ng church, why not to come into the church and pray for one another and exercise your faith. Nakakalungkot, maraming tao nagpupunta po ng supermarket, ng wet market, hindi natatakot. Marami nagpupunta ng Alpha Mart, nagpupunta ng palengke, hindi natatakot. Pero pagpupunta ng church, natatakot baka mahawa. Maraming tao na pupunta ng trabaho para masustain nila yung kanilang pangangailangan. Hindi natatakot. Bumabiyay, sumasakay, nakikisalamuwa. Hindi natatakot. Pero pag pupunta ng church, huwag muna. Kasi, delikado. Baka mahawa. Nasaan ang pananampalataya? Nasaan yung ating paninindigan bilang isang mananampalataya that God is in control? Kapatid, ikaw ay isang anak ng Diyos kailanman ay hindi pababayaan ng Diyos. At kung ikaw ay mananalangin, papalalangin mo ang bawat sa, ngayon na ikaw nanonood, ikaw na nandito ngayon physically, at lahat ng mga kapatiran natin sa anong dakong lula. Kung ikaw ay magiging kaisa sa panalangin, samahan sa panalangin, And praying for one another, it means you're involving yourselves and practicing your faith. So, kung naniniwala ka na ang panalangin ng dalawa, tatlo at apat, at higit sa isa, ay higit na mga pangyarihan. Higit na establish. Higit na matatag. Kung pinagasama-sama natin ang ating parang matatag. It speaks a prayer And, the Lord. and we will see not only it speaks, it speaks about the people of God, not only it speaks about prayer, but the house of the Lord ang tao po ng Diyos ay tumutukoy po or speaks of seeking God. Are you seeking God? Are we seeking God in our lives today? Siguro marami ngayon naghahanap sa Panginoon. Siguro marami ngayon ang gusto makasumpong ng Himala sa Panginoon. Pero nung panahon ay walang sitwasyon na ganito. Are we seeking God? Are we looking after the Lord? But the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7.14, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, we will see here, they are looking for a revival in their lives. And people who seek revival build faith. Build faith. Kapatid, when was the last time you asked God, Lord, will you please restore my faith? Will you restore my, my Christian life? Will you restore my spiritual life? When was the last time you asked God to restore your relationship with Him? When was the last time to ask God, Lord, will you please rejuvenate, enhance, develop, flourish my faith? When was the last time you asked the Lord and seek His presence? Sa panahon na ba na may pangangailangan? How about in the glorious day of your life? 
a blessed day in your life. Have you ever considered God? And seek Him? Sana sa lahat ng pagkakataon, let us always seek God in our lives. Kahit nagkatrabaho ka, kahit nag-aaral ka, kahit nasa pandemya ka, kahit nasa kaligasa, sa kagandahan ng pamumuhay mo, always seek God in our lives. The Bible is very clear in this promise that if you seek God first, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, His kingdom and His righteousness, if you seek God first in your life, despite and in spite of your situation, kuunay mo ang Panginoon, He will be adding you whatever you desire and whatever you have in your life. It is very clear statement of God. Ang sabi niya, seek Him first, the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And if you seek God, you are what? Exercising your faith and definitely your faith ay lalagun po sa harapan ng Panginoon. That's why fellowshipping, praying, and loving people cause faith to flourish. We need your life. We need your, your presence. We need your fellowship. That's why very important for us. Magkaroon po tayo ng fellowship. We need, it's very important for us na may panalangin natin ng bawat isa. And it's very important for us na magkaroon tayo ng pag-ibig sa isa't isa. Sapagat ito po nagiging dahilan upang ang pananampalataya mo ay pwede mo sabihin na malago at lumalago sa biyayan ng Panginoon. Church, itong bagay na ito, ang fellowship, praying, and loving people, it talks about church involvement. You cannot involve yourself into the church without having fellowship without praying one another and without loving people inside the church. That's why church involvement keeps faith flourishing. Dapat, ganun po tayo ka eager sa ating buhay pa naman tayo. That is the second principle. If you're aiming to flourish your faith, live in a consistent life of being a Christian. And if you are aiming to flourish your faith, involve your faith or involve yourselves to the church. It means, hindi yung, masab, lagi naman ako sa loob ng church. That is not talking about. What I'm talking about in church involvement is, we need to have fellowship to one another, visit people who are needy, who is needed, needy. Help other people and pray for them. Are you praying for one another? Are you praying for your brethren? Are you praying for Brother Matthew right now is in the hospital. I pray for Sister Elena, Sister Ian, or some of our brethren who are now suffering or some illnesses. Are you praying for the needs of everyone? Are you praying for your pastor? Are you praying for your neighbor? Are you praying for your brethren in the Lord? That is what church involvement means. You are willing to have fellowship to one another. Because napaka-importante po ng fellowship it will encourage your brethren. Yung makita lang ang niti mo, it is a great encouragement for them. How much more kung ipanalangin mo pa sila? You are involving yourselves. We need to involve ourselves to one another. Do not isolate yourselves. Do not be what like this, ah, ganito ako, ganito. No! As a Christian, let us open our hearts, let us open our minds, and let us involve ourselves to one another. Have a fellowship with them. Have a, a prayer. Pray, uh, we need to pray for one another. And of course, lastly, we need to love one another. Hindi yung pwede sabihin, mahal kita ng Panginoon, pero hindi ko kaya mahalin ang aking kapatid. Sabi ng Panginoon, kung iniibig mo, kung ibigin mo, ang iyong kapatid. Sapagat ang sino mang umiibig sa pinakaabang tao, ay siya yung umiibig sa akin. That's why church involvement is not talking about the church in physicality. But church involvement means you're involving yourselves to one another. Oh, I thank God for those brethren who immediately extended their help for our brethren who needed in, in finances. Thank you so much, my brethren. We are able to give them a, a, a support monetary. Hindi man ganun kalaki, but we thank God. We thank God because our brethren are willing to help Sister Elena. Sister Elena, 
there's, there's a, a help from, from our brother in the Barnabas of Faith. And of course, our dear pastor, Sir Adonna. I thank God because not only saying, I love you with the love of the Lord in mouth, in words, but even in action, we're able to say, I love you with the love of the Lord. That is the true and legit church involvement. Because even though this is your last money, even though this is your, you are, have a hectic time, but still you're spending your effort, exerting your effort to involve yourselves to your brethren. Because it means you are practicing your faith. Church involvement is not about the church physically, but it's talking about yourselves and myself involving one another. That is church involvement. At yan, lumalago po ang ating paranda. Thirdly, or third principle, not only consistent living keeps faith flourishing, not only church involvement keeps faith flourishing, but thirdly, the third principle is we will see here in verse 14, sabi nito, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. You know, if you live it consistently, listen to this, Mula simula ka sa young people na natili kang tapat at ini-involve mo ang sarili mo at na natili kang tapat sa Panginoon, sa buhay kristyano mo hanggang sa umidad ka na, hanggang sa naging adult ka ng church. The Bible is very clear. clear. Sabi nito, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Kapatid, hindi ka tatantanan ng Panginoon na pagpalain. They shall be fat. Gusto mo maging fat? and flourish of your life. That's why we need to be constant. We need to be, what? Consistent. That's why the third principle we will see here is constant charge wide outreach causes faith to flourish. It means you will never stop serving the Lord. Not only have a consistent, consistent naman po sa aking buhay, Pastor. Lagi naman po ako maatin. Naging involved po ako sa church, may naging pray po ako. But yung tinatawag po natin constant church-wide outreach, yung talagang main thing na binigay sa inyo ng Panginoon to go and preach the gospel. Main thing, the main thing. Kung ginagawa ko ito, that you are not only stay on inside the church, having fellowship to one another, but you also extending your effort outside going to the to the field and sharing to other people. Ano yun? Sa ano yung outreach dito? Yung outreach not only within the people in the church but also outside the church. Your family. Your 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 your, your colleagues. Your office mate. Your workmate. Your classmate. These Those are the people na sinasabi po rito that we need to reach them and tell them about the good news of salvation. At kapag ginagawa po natin yon, we are involving ourselves to the outreach. Pagbibigay po sa atin ito ng paglago ng ating pananampalatan. You know, flourishing faith is the result of continuing evangelism. Ang resulta po neto, no, kung sakitin mo naging lumalago, ibig sabihin, nagiging consistent ka to share the gospel to other people. You are practicing evangelism and you share ka sa bawat tao. And churches that constantly, uh, the churches that constantly reach out to the lost people keep flourishing. About the wild simbahan na patuloy na umabot ng mga ligaw na kaluluwa na hindi pa nakakilala sa Panginoon, ito yung mga tao Ito yung mga tao o simbahan na patuloy na lumalago sa kanilang pananampalataya. Those are the people. At yung thrill of souls, yung pananabik nila, yung excitement nila sa bawat kaluluwa na kanilang mapapanalo, being won to Christ, ito rin po ay nagdadala po sa kanila sa paglago sa pananampalataya. Ang isang malago kong kristyano, Ang isa pong umuulad na pananampalataya po ay merong pong excitement or he or she thrilled 
to reach out the lost souls. Are you excited and thrilled about that? Or you are contented doing your activities inside this church without reaching out them and telling them about the good news of salvation? Do not be complacent inside the church, but rather go to the to the field and reach them because they also need Christ Amen. as their Lord and Savior of their life. Look at the early church. The early church was a what? The early church was a soul winning church ever moving forward. Nung panahon nila, the Macedonian churches, Di ba? Yung mga naunang church, yung mga taga-Pilipos, taga-Macedonia, taga-Corinto, yung mga taong nauna sa atin na namumuhay noon sa pamananampalataya, they are consistent sharing the gospel. They are consistent in soul winning. That despite of the situation, can you imagine that what will happen to them? Pag nabasa niyo yung trail of blood, kung paano nagpatuloy yung mga early churches, the New Testament churches, grabe, baka sumuko po tayo sa panahon po natin ngayon. Ngayon, hindi lang magkaroon ng karoon lang ng problema, nabigula sa pag-ibig, tumitigil na sa pananampalataya eh. Noon, tanggal niya ulo mo, tuloy-tuloy pa rin sila sa pakikibakan. Severe persecution, sabi nga ni Apostle Paul ang kanyang description, Kinulong sila. Pinugutan ng ulo. Hinagi sa gitna. Could you imagine that? Binato hanggang sa mamatay. Binalatan. Ang daming dugo ng kristyano ang binuwis para lang magpatuloy ang pananampalataya. And no wonder their faith flourished in that fast-growing congregation. Hindi nakakataka. Hindi katakataka kung paano lumago ang mga pananampalatayan ito nung panahon na yon hanggang sa yun ng ating po sa atin. Kapatid, kung tumigil ang mga naunang kristyano ng unang panahon sa kanilang pananampalataya at pag-a-outreach ng mga tao sa hindi na sa lugar na ito kung sa bawat lugar pa, kung si Apostle Paul ay tumigil ang kanyang ang mission, ang kanyang journey sa pag-apahal ng salita ng Panginoon, maybe the Word of God ay hindi makakarating po sa, mga, sa atin po. And I thank God because of their consistency. Because of their consistent living. Ang kanilang pamumuhay ay consistent. Kaya kaya ng pananampalataya ay lumago. Ang kanilang church involvement, consistent. They are praying one another in the book of Acts, di ba? They are one accord. Na kahit na may mga indifferences, Meron pagkakaiba sa kanilang ugali. Meron pagkakaiba sa kanilang estado. But they are one and united in faith. Hindi sila tumigil. That's why salvation ay nakarating po sa atin. At ang good news po, hindi rin sila umustap at naging constant sila sa church-wide outreach. Kaya nga po, sila po mula po doon sa apostol, ay nagpangalat sila at inutusan sila ng Panginoon sa Acts chapter 1 verse 8. What? At sabi ng Panginoon sa kanila, you will be what? Become witnesses not only to Jerusalem, but to Judea, to Samaria, and to the uttermost place of this world. Ito yung inutos and this is what God has commanded to the people, to His people, to all Christians. That we will become a witnesses not only to your Jerusalem, not only to your Judea, not only to your Samaria, but to the uttermost place. And to the uttermost place. Kung tumigil po ang mga, mga naunang kristyano pong ito at hindi sila naging consistent in their Christian life, Maybe marami pa rin tao na hindi nakakakilala sa Panginoon. Dahil hindi tayo naabot ng kaligtasan. Hindi sila napagod, mga kapatid. Hindi sila napanghinaan ng loob 
Siguro tumating yung mga pagkakataon na may mga discouragement sila. But the Bible is very clear. Sabi ni King David, it's better to put our trust in the Lord than confidence unto men. Siguro naging ganun ang kanilang thinking. Siguro naging ganun ang kanilang motivation that it's best, that it's better to put our trust in the Lord than confidence unto men. And what happened? Their faith ay nabago at nabaguloy na ginamit. We need to be what? To become consistent in our living. We need to involve ourselves at the church. And we need to become constant for the church-wide outreach. For us, our faith flourish in the sight of God and before God. And to conclude our lessons for today, is your faith flourishing or fainting. Ang pananampalataya ba ngayon ang iyong buhay? Just ask yourself, is my faith flourishing or fainting? In times like this, in times like this, maraming nawala ng trabaho, maraming kagutuman, hindi nabigyan ng ayuda ng support ng gobyerno. Or maybe you are in trouble right now, you are sick, you lost your loved ones, Is your faith flourishing or fainting? Mabagsak ka na ba? O mananatili ka? And second question is, what will you do to get your faith flourishing again? What will you do? Anong gagawin mo para ang iyong pananampalataya ay maging manito? Ulit. Naalala mo when was the last time? Naalala mo nung tinanggap mo ang Panginoon? Kaano kalakas? How big or how great your faith before God when you accepted Him as the Lord and Savior the first time you accepted the Lord and Savior your life? Sabi mo ka, parang supernatural ka eh. Lahat kagawin ko. Ganun ka ka on fire. How about now today? Are you faith, your faith flourishing or fainting now? Church, let this message be a reminder for us. Let's live in a consistent life. Na kahit anong mangyari in our lives today, whether you experience some trouble or you experience some blessing, be consistent. Be consistent in your vision. And not always involve ourselves for others. If there's someone knocking at the door of the heart and ask help, don't forget that you are in peace with God as a blessing, as a blessing of blessing. And let us always maintain the main thing. And what is the main thing? Let's go to the out. Let's go out and reach the people for them to be able to know about the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a vision. Let us flourish our faith once again before God. Exercise and always practice in the Lord. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you. Tonight, we are reminded by your words that we need to become positive always. That we need to live consistently. That we need to involve ourselves. And we need to be a constant to outpour for the program, to the outreach program na dapat namin gawin para sa inyo. Lord, we know that it's impossible to do things without you, Father God, in our lives. That's why, Father God, we ask you to undertake us that whatever we do, Lord God, tonight, that whatever the plan, that whatever the situation that we have in our lives today, undertake us, Father. Help us and guide us, Father God. 
Dear Lord our God, Nisan nagugulihan at kami because of our situation. So you discourage. But thank you for your words. It gives us a great encouragement to continue our lives. But in spite of our situation today, ay alam po namin na meron kami lalapitan. Salamat o Diyos. Salamat po Panginoon. Sa ito na pinagkakatiwala ang aming bayan. Ang aming bansa, ang lahat ng tao sa mundo. But because of this pandemic, marami ang nagkaroon ng anxiety, marami na depressed, marami na tako. Lord, we believe in your power. We believe in your provision. We believe in your healing power, Lord. Ikaw ang metda ng buhay. Ikaw ang may disenyo ng aming mga buhay. That's why, Father God, we need to exercise our faith. Even faith, faith we have in our lives, even the kind of faith that we have is like a mustard seed, we know that we can do great things because you are with us. Lord, thank you so much. Help those people who are now suffering of some illnesses. Si Matthew, si Sister Ayer, na kanyang kapatid, and the agony that Sister Ellen is raising right now, we are praying for them. Comfort them and keep the Lord as you listen. Our brethren from MIPC, Maragundon, whatever the prayers that they have in their lives, speak to them and talk to them, Father God. Our Pastor Adona and his family. Or their loved ones. Or their relatives. Pastor Darren Miller in the MDC, Makana, Texas, USA. Pray for them. Please undertake his mother. Grandma Hazel and Grandpa Peyton. Whatever there is for God, especially Mother Hazel, for the medication, heal her father God. And even our dear sister from different places and brothers in different places, we pray for them. I may not be able to name them one by one, but I pray for them in general. Those who are listening right now and watching right now, and those people who speak right now, right now here in the church, I pray, Father God, whatever the desire of their hearts and their prayers, I know. Narinig mo at nalilangin mo, Panginoon. Kaya maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon. Salamat o Diyos. Ay po namin pinabalik ang lahat ng kapulihan, lahat ng pasalamat sa matilang pangalan ng aming Diyos at ikapagligtas. Amen. And I pray. Maraming 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 salamat Church Thank you so much for your faithfulness And uh, Please please uh, Always Observe uh, Safety And Ingatan po lang mga sarili At please continue to pray for one another And pray for the pastor And uh, please Pray for Pastor Sunny Guerrero For their anniversary It's coming August 30 And for the provision of God for your needs. Uh, of course, please do pray for one another. And don't forget to watch later. Tomorrow will be our devotion. It's 8 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock in Macalan, Texas, USA, their prayer meeting of Maranatha Baptist Church. Please do watch MBC Macalan, Texas. Pastor Dalmir with the speaker. And on Sunday, please be excited and thrilled about the service. On our afternoon service, we have a guest speaker. Now, surprise guest speaker. So, please be excited. So, please be here on Sunday afternoon. And of course, Sunday morning, our worship service in the morning. So, please always pray for one another and God bless us all. May the Lord bless you always. And, uh, of course, 
We will include the prayers. No? Diba ba sa ito mali mga prayer list? Okay? So, mamaya po, ipag-pray po namin lahat po ng sinan po na inyong mga prayer requests. Ipag-pray po namin ngayon. Okay? Ipag-pray po namin. Kaya MIBC, lahat po ng sinan po ninyo sa, na, sa prayer po ngayon. TFBC, ipag-pray po namin ngayon. MBC, uh, Sister Arian, Pastor Sally Guerrero, Sister Leticia, and uh, uh, lahat po na nakikinig po ngayon. Hindi ko naman sa aking mga pangalan ninyo, pero nag-send po kayo. Isasabog po namin. For the meantime, Ay, uh, ikakata po namin ang aming live streaming for you to uh, have a, uh, some rest and uh, please join us later sa aming po uh, prayer uh, prayer time. Kahit nandiyan po kayo, samahan niyo po kayo mananagi after this. So magandang magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Thank you so much, so much MIPC Marugundon, Pastor Adana, and your family. Thank you so much, brethren from TFBC, MBC, Get 70 Baptisters, Sister Leticia, Sister Arian, and the rest of the viewers and visitors. na nandito pa ngayon. God bless us all. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. At magandang gabi naman po dito sa amin. Maraming maraming salamat. God bless us all and take care. Keep safe always. Pagkipan natin natin leader. Brother Julius, Brother Owen, Politology.